Yes. So my prince came when I was like late 60s. <laughs> Not in the late 60s. I was in my late 60s. Right. And you swept me off my feet, but you didn't have a white horse and you didn't have a glass slipper in your hand. Right. If I had held you to that fairy tale, you would have never, you wouldn't have been it. You'd have passed me by. And I, you would have passed me by because I didn't look like any princess. Hello, baby. Hi, Michael. <laughs> you know, I'm preparing a TED Talk. I'm excited about it. And do you know what it's about? I do. But yeah. You're going to tell me anyway. I am. <laughs> it's about the myth that Walt Disney like put on all of us. It doesn't matter if we're American. Everywhere, all around the world, people know about Cinderella. Yeah. And also Sleeping Beauty. Well, all of the fairy tales that have to do with happily ever the, after the happily yes yeah like yeah. someday my prince will come and whisk me off my feet and we don't need any skills as soon as we meet we live happily ever after well it's kind of weird isn't it because it's like the the you, we could run through the list of them rapunzel and uh sleeping beauty and i said cinderella cinderella all of these come with this this idea that there is a knight in shining armor and he's looking for you and he's got a he's got a glass slipper <laughs> and he's he's on his way he's coming to find you he's knocking on every door yeah he's really pursuing you to find out where no, is my sleeping beauty and sleeping beauty he's a frog she has to kiss a frog no no he's not a frog he's a prince but he comes and he kisses her while she's asleep and then he turns into the the frog? no he never turns into i can't remember <laughs> And then what about the princess and the pea? Do you remember oh, that yeah. one? That okay. one is, yeah. Anyway, it's right. all, I call bullshit on all of it. Well, it's all, it set us all up for failure. Mm -hmm. And that's the piece that I want to talk about. People need communication skills. People need to learn how to sustain a relationship. I, they don't have anywhere to learn that except from us. It's not as though they're being taught that in school. You know, if you're if you're thinking of primary school and then middle school and then high school, what are we learning? We're not learning communication skills. We're not learning anything that is really important to us later in life. We're, well, some of you might do geometry. I don't. <laughs> I, don't do, I don't do trigonometry. I do basic math for I, the most part. And and earth science. Biology, I definitely do. We're both studying Spanish now. Mm -hmm, did that's... you take Spanish in school? I did. I didn't. I took French. Uh -oh. That gets me really far. They forced us to learn things that have no import on our life. What's the most important thing in your life? It has to be my relationships. Yeah. yeah. How about your relationship to me? Big time. And my relationship to you. Yes. So my prince came when I was like late 60s. <laughs> Not in the late 60s. I was in my late 60s. Right. And you swept me off my feet, but you didn't have a white horse and you didn't have a glass slipper in your hand. Right. If I had held you to that fairy tale, you would have never, you wouldn't have been it. You'd have passed me by. And I, you would have passed me by because I didn't look like any princess. Right. You weren't the princess with the that had the foot waiting for the And I didn't have on a gown with crinolines and I wasn't in a pumpkin. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and you didn't have mice riding you home. Exactly. That's a circle so of twelve. I am upset about these things that we were yeah. forced to learn and the fairy tales that we were read, mm -hmm. and that nobody, to my knowledge, has any skills about keeping a relationship together and that's what you and i are up to some of the information that you you've you've been able to discover has changed the way i look at couples so why don't you give us some of those statistics forbes says 50 percent of first marriages end in separation and divorce if you get married a second time it's worse. Statistics say 60% of all couples end in separation and divorce. And if you should attempt a third marriage, 73% fail. Why bother? If you don't increase your skills and enhance something about your relatability, like the art of relating, you're doomed. Yeah.
And we always say couples are an endangered species. It, it, it really it does support the idea that couples are an endangered species. It proves it. And and like wildlife that's endangered. Yeah. Couples are like wildlife because they don't have the skills it takes to sustain a relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's the state of our union. That's the state that we're in right now. Yeah. You know, the struggle is real. I mean, because there is this idea that happily ever after just happens. And and I always have to ask the question, how's it going? Like, how's it going for how's you? Working for you? You know, that's ridiculous. I mean, let's talk to the women for a moment. Let's just ask you, you know, how's it going? You know, are, do you find yourself with the Prince Charming that you were uh, you were sold in a Disney film? Or, you know, or is he some, you know, pot belly guy sitting on his lazy boy watching, you know, the football game on Sundays? Like, what happened? Right. And even though that maybe that's your situation, even though. You still love the guy. What's love got to do with it? <laughs> well, so much if you know what love is. What it has to do with it is if you love somebody, you'd be willing to get trained. Yeah. You'd be willing to participate in a workshop or a retreat, which would add to your skills of communication and connection to make you able to sustain something Happily ever after. That's why we do extraordinary lovers. That's why lovers. we do extraordinary lovers. It's exactly right. So coming up in June, I'm excited. June in Denver, June 6th to 9th in Denver. If you hear something here that excites you, if you hear something that disturbs you, if you hear something that moves you, contact us, write Denver in the comments. We want to see you there. We want you to make it. We want you to be happily ever after. Absolutely. And we're looking forward to seeing you in Denver. If you have any questions, again, in the comments, write Denver, and we'll be happy to send you some more information and maybe even have a chat with you. Mm -hmm.